surprising that nothing. basically going through this is um, physically done of parts with, um, since 1999 I buried ground for more than 259,000 people victims of the mental against what they see and we are still on an ongoing process of the very activity I think it's been like two months that we recovered around 600 people uh, from the same district where we are and um, the work still continues. There was um, a research that was conducted by the government of Rwanda, which resulted to 7,000 families that were totally wiped out. So you never know when uh, this work will end. And um, it's also a place of learning through uh, three permanent exhibits. And the first one taken through the whole historical background of the genocide against the uh, has the recovery process. And then we look at other perspectives of genocide and mass killings worldwide, including the Holocaust, Armenia, Cambodia, and so on. And at the end, there's a memorial for young people, um, children, victims of the genocide, which obviously will be one of the most uh, striking parts of this memorial. Um, so we will start by watching a short um, introductory film, um, which is also not an easy thing to digest. And um, then I will show you um, around. So please kindly silence your phones for the respect face and using covers for the outside but whatever in those will be um, these are payments that you need to do to be able to use your camera. So thank you very much and we never wait. Thank you. 
Jenoside bwatangiraga ari itsinda cy'icumi. Urumva Jenoside yagiye ndaho akomeye kumwa kuko abari kumfata n'umwa n'umwa n'abari bamaze gupfa. Wenda nakoraga ku buryo hatajya wumva ubona ko ari uko ufite ikibazo ariko nawe ndi nkifuza kuba abantu bafite ko ubwabana. Eh mwe musenge cyane bakane n'ati na cumi ndatu.
Nono fa ufenesi. Hati na hati tujamii. Nono nasha kwa sinda kano nono mani ya mufa. Nono fa kumia. It's something that has a very long uh, history and that's what we'll be seeing in the museum. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't happen like overnight. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, people, especially Bloody. those who deny it, mm -hmm. use those you know, uh, periodic yeah. statements that are not true. Mm -hmm. Like you know, the plane crashed and then the genocide happened or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's something that took so long. People being dehumanized to cockroaches and mm -hmm. snakes. A lot of you know, people fled the country, mm -hmm. fleeing persecutions. Mm -hmm. And, and and different other uh, acts of mm. you know yeah. of, of unhuman acts. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So before we do the museum, mm -hmm. um, this is one of the graves, uh, mm -hmm. like I was telling you, and um, um, as I told you, it's it's six meters deep at least, and seven to eight meters wide, and this is only one graveyard of other two hundred and thirty-three we have in the country. Mm. And, and, and most unfortunately, um, a big number of them were former churches. So this is something that we probably um, need to know. So the church did not stand to um, save lives, no. but you know it betrayed its own wow. congregants. The Catholic and the other churches? And other uh, churches, of course, but the Catholic <coughs> had more than 90% of the whole population. population. And they occupied more than 50% of the education system. So obviously, if they control faith mm. and education, they must know what is going on in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so when that's people why ran to the churches, Catholic churches? Not even running to that. They were told to come in the churches. Mm. So the set pastors up. called them in the churches, mm -hmm. but it was a setup. For, you know, set up. And, and for them, it was more like, how can we kill as many people as we can Jesus. in a short time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people would not. Who would believe that you'd be killed on the altar? Mm. Or women being uh, sexually assaulted on, you know, in, in the churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they knew very well that you know, mm -hmm. it was like a Christian country, so mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. thought mm. it's going to be a refuge. But you know, other churches as well. Mm -hmm. My own church, I don't go to that church anymore, to be honest with you. Because wow. mm -hmm. it's, 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 I don't want to go back to that church. Yeah. And yeah. some of the times those people are still around, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, you know, yeah. those pastors are, are still. Mm -hmm. So we have, yeah. we have uh, an exhibit in the museum that we'll be okay. explaining okay. to you as well. Amen. So before we go, I would like to mm -hmm. kindly ask you to observe a minute of silence. Mm -hmm. But before, we have um, a wreath of flowers that will be laying on the grave mm -hmm. to pay tribute to all those victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll head back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on.
Very well state sponsored. So I sent message, the same heinous message I was you know, being given to the East and to the North. So proud to show you that the people who made this film come from of having a physical museum. Wow. Uh, which I'm sure you know him. Know him? Clinton yeah. Foundation, yeah. Yeah, we know them. Yeah. Reminded you might have known that he was the one the president as well, yeah. He wouldn't send the troops. No. He could have stopped it. He could have done it. With 50 troops. The one American troop would have stopped it. Probably not. So. Yeah. But, you know, they were more interested in other. Mm -hmm. and, and the memorial is run by Idris Trust. Mm -hmm. uh, Idris is basically a, a, a UK based genocide prevention organization that runs the Holocaust Memorial in the UK. Okay. Wow. So it runs this memorial on behalf of the government of Rwanda mm -hmm. and different other programs for peace as well. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. like a proper um, word that defines uh, the whole events mm -hmm. of the genocide. genocide is perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This was perfect, but we had like a lot of terms yeah. and other terminologies. Mm -hmm. And this was very important as well because you will hear people um, trying to deny they using can't. terminologies. Yeah. You know, like some of the books talk about like, genocide against the Hutus and Tutsis and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and for us to be able to, uh, to, make, it, to make that difference, mm -hmm. uh, to be clear. So it's the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsis wow. in Rwanda. Wow. If there's any Hutu who died, he died because of his faith. Right. Yeah. You know, to protect. To protect. To protect. But uh, he wasn't hunted to death for right. so long. He was right. let go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. And the UN has a talk. Yeah. 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 talk about the history of, of the country, of course, um, mm -hmm. like a kingdom that existed for so many centuries uh, mm -hmm. before the colonial power, mm -hmm. around five centuries, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it was a country that, a kingdom that enjoyed so many unifying features, yeah. which was kind of different to eight other neighboring or other um, societies around mm -hmm. us. So we had um, um, uh, Rwandans. Mm -hmm. who belonged to different clans, which was like family, families. And then from the clans, you could belong to, to different social and economic classes, mm -hmm. which happened to be Hutus, Tutsi, and Twa. Right. And there was free movement between them. So you could be, I mean, Tutsis were like a noble class mm -hmm. because they were cattle holders. Mm -hmm. And, and um, um, cows have been always, even now, very honorific thing yeah. in our community. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it doesn't mean that you can't you can't become one. It was free movement between them, and, okay. and they all, despite where they belong to, you, you all share the same practices of the culture, the mm -hmm. same do's and don'ts, the mm -hmm. same obedience. Everything was the same, mm -hmm. and you have um, same beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the the cultural uh, beliefs, mentality. The mentality that people had, and it was the same. Um, uh, not depending on where you come and um, you know um, the moral education that starts from the small family, mm -hmm. and you gain more values that it expands to become mm -hmm. uh, the country's values. Mm -hmm. And uh, most importantly, you speak one language, oh, one language, only one language, mm -hmm. um, kind of different to other societies. Mm -hmm. So the whole life um, I was talking about in those unifying features um, happened here until late 1890s when the colonial power invaded yeah, yeah. the country. Yeah. So that's where we're going to, to lose the sovereignty, the, 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 the language, everything is going to destroy us. And most badly, and, and it hurts me so much, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. So I say it, it was all done in the name of Jesus because the church has had a big role into, into that as well. Mm -hmm. So we were colonized by two countries, the um, Germans and later the Belgians. The king, basically, UV5 Musinga, refuses everything that the colonial power tries to bring in, wow. including the new king, right. Jesus. He says, no, we have our own religion. So one of the things they talk about in, in, in um, one of the explorers here called Richard Kant mm -hmm. said is questions that he asked to them. He, he was like, so you, I am the king, right? And you bring another king that I have to respect. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yes. So where is that king? I need to talk to him. Like, you don't, I don't need any person to be right. in, in intermediate. Right. And like, he died. So, so you kill your so, king. Uh, so if you kill your king and they receive you in my community, I'll be the next to die. Right. Mm -hmm. So he said, go. But they were more powerful than he could be. Mm -hmm. um, he was sent of his country, and they 
put on the throne his son, who happened to be very young. Uh -huh. um, he's baptized in the Catholic Church. Okay. He's given a new name, uh, Charles, has uh, a new name. And um, so that, that's where we're going to see a lot of changes now under, under, under his throne. Um, so they applied the divide and conquer mm. um, system. So first they defined, they redefined the origins of Rwanda. Mm. So the Tutsis were from the north of Africa. Mm -hmm. They put some anti-Semitism also. Uh, they, they, because this king was a Tutsi and he has a very powerful hierarchy of the system, like the way he lived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were like, you can't do this. You must be related to us. Mm -hmm. You can't be that clever. So this thing into you must have been coming to right. from us. So they start relating Tutsis to the Caucasians. Right. The, the story of um, Jesus. Of um, I can't remember. It's in the Bible, but the, the two kids who were the one that gave birth to to to, to mm -hmm. Jacob to the Queen Shaba in Ethiopia. Oh, okay. Queen Sheba. Yeah, Solomon. Queen Sheba. Solomon had two kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. one is I don't know, but there's a story that they connected from the Bible mm -hmm. to throw. Yeah. Have, so the purpose was what? This is what this was my point. The purpose is not to show them that they are powerful. Right. No, the purpose is for the rest of the population to see that these people have a higher status. So they started feeling inferior. Right. Of everybody else. Of everybody right. else. Uh -huh. Who had they had lived with all the time. Right. Right. They, married each other and doing everything. Oh my God. So, and their purpose is that later, they will say that these this, this Caucasian people are not indigenous from here. They're more clever than you are. Right. And they are the ones on the power. Right. And they're the ones that are rich. Right. So the number of cows you own will determine where you belong to. Exactly. Who says cows, says money. Right. So 10 cows and above were Tutsi, and less than 10 cows were so at the end, it's this minority has everything you need to revolt yourself. Right. And this is exactly what happened in the, in the, wow. Yeah, in the, in the, somewhat of a brainwash. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. brainwash. Okay. And uh, that's, a man, not only the number of cows that you own, or what you belong to, but also uh, statistically, the, you know, the, the minority mm -hmm. against the majority. Mm -hmm. So 15% became the Tutsi, mm -hmm. and 84%, which was done very arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. They just took whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And 1% um, became the top, and they were given new ID cards. Wow. They changed their name and everything. Right. Everything. Mm -hmm. Because you were given a, right. a French name. Right. You know, that's when we started having French names and letters. Wow. So I, I told you that we only had one language, Kenya Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So on your ID card, as a Rwanda, there's no Kenya Rwanda name. I mean, there's no Kenya Rwanda. Nice. Everything is in French and Flemish. Wow. Mm -hmm. So your language is gone. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how, so the, 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 the Catholic fathers, the colonizers, explorers, tried to anthropologically mm -hmm. prove that these people were different. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at, we, we were critically thinking as people of this uh, era, but if you think about a person like Bishop Ferroda, mm -hmm. Um, he was considered as a modern scientist. You know, mm. he has proven how people are different. Mm. An anthropologist mm -hmm. who also is helped by the word of God. Exactly. Uh, in, in the, yeah. And we were, we were divided. Mm -hmm. the, the, the length of the nose also will determine where you belong to. <laughs> you know, anthropology. But wow. And of course, Long noses will be given to the Tutsis who mm. are from the north and the Caucasus, mm. look at how people look like. And short noses to the Hutu, the uh, western part of Rwanda, I mean, of Africa, mm. the Chad and Cameroon and everything mm. that they came through migration movements. And so all those things were put together mm. to show people how different they are. So the results were what? In 1959, uh, we had already a big number of Hutus that have been to school. Mm -hmm. You know, they are educated, mm -hmm. so they stand for that inequality. Mm -hmm. 
and the king who wants to be, who has been traveling around in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. He he met the Kwame Nkrumahs in, in mm -hmm. of Ghana. So they, they are in a period of Pan Africanism mm -hmm. that they want to be independent. Tanzania close to us was supposed was about to be independent. So he's inspired by these people. He wants to be independent. Of course this is being going to be used against him. Yeah. And he was killed. Mm. Um, he was supposed politically also he wanted to leave the Belgium because he had you know he's not seeing any more interest with them. He wants to go to the Americans. He was supposed to go um, discuss in um, in fifty nine um, um, you know independence with the with the Americans and he was killed in Burundi. Wow. He was basically supposed to get the yellow fever vaccination and he died from the vaccination. Ah, mm -hmm. you, you get the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still a mysterious thing up to now. Mm -hmm. They don't want to admit that they did that. Wow. And um, first result, so many people revolted. Uh, now the majority is against the minority and so many people were persecuted to death. We lost around a million people that fled the country fleeing persecution going outside Rwanda in 1959. Yeah, so 1st November 1959, that's when they started to be killed because they're Africans. Wow. So that's where the ethnic cleansing is going to start from. Mm. So those who talk about 1994 only, they, 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 don't, they, know. they, they don't know what they're talking about. Wow, so a million had to flee. Yes, around 900 to 1 million. So I'll play this video. Okay. It has subtitles in English, mm -hmm. which will clarify more mm -hmm. what I just talked about. Mm In Rwanda, um, when the Europeans first arrived in 1894, they found the most extraordinary society with um, who should took to living side by side, intermarrying, speaking the same language, telling the same myth, the same legend. Um, one piece, one piece. Thank you. 
ariko ntibwabonye ibirara dubona ndere hasa ariko ntibwabonye amateka dubona ishema ry'igihugu ariko ubwoko rumwe will be considered as a totally divided. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the leadership that followed, the Republic, the first Republic after the independence that was followed, was also so divided. Um, politics are very repressive. Um, we have a Hutu power um, Republic that is going to follow. So this is one of his statements, Gregor Kaivanda who comes in, by the way, with um, a sense of um, emancipating the mass Hutu. Mm -hmm. so, so he considers, because he has been working with the colonial masters, so he considers the mass Hutu as an oppressed you know, mm. population mm -hmm. that he comes to emancipate. Yeah. Change the mindset. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the Hutu and the Tutsi are two communities are two nations in a single state. This is what he believes in. Mm. That they think differently, they are ignorant of each other's, each other's habits and, mm. and, and, and feelings, mm. as if they were inhabitants of two um, different planets or, or zones of the planet. Mm. And he started, like one of the things he did is like, uh, creating some sort of pogroms, mm -hmm. like the same thing with the, with the with Jewish people. And in the eastern part of Rwanda, a place that was an, um, um, invaded by a tsetse fly, mm -hmm. uh, a deadly mosquito, um, he s started sending them there. And um, um, his, his, his so region, like he's from the south, and everything goes to the south with, the, with his family and, 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 uh, and friends. So the northeast now will find a way to overthrow him. Mm. So now it's no longer, politically, it's no longer a problem of Hutus against Hutus or minority against majority. It's now Hutus between themselves. Yeah. Northeast consider themselves as perfect Hutus mm -hmm. and the Southeast as mixed ones. Mm -hmm. So the Northeast will find, it's, it was just finding a way of overthrowing to bring the, the other president and mm -hmm. take the power. And Javier um, Mana comes in that way, overthrows the first uh, and he leads the second republic. And he promises some kind of peace that some of the Tutsi that were outside already Rwanda and refugees tried to come back. Mm -hmm. But some of them uh, literally were killed on, on the borders. Mm -hmm. But it's more, so they were all extremists, but Abdelimana is more strategic. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to make sure that you understand why you are going to kill this person, right. not like go kill that person. Right. So you, you have to understand why a Tutsi is a threat to you. Mm -hmm. And so he started, you know, um, teaching hatred in schools, in a small society. Um, he implies a quota system, and that quota system will give less representativity to Tutsis because they are, they are also uh, a minority mm. in the community. And um, so much representativity to the Hutus because they were the majority, so that's the reason. Um, so that's how some of the Tutsis couldn't go to school. Mm. Um, my father told me in 73 that he was supposed to go to high school, and that's the year he took over the power. And he was simply told that his place was given to a neighbor. Mm. And, and that was taken like a normal thing. You know, it's very normal. You're not supposed to go to school because your neighbor friend is supposed to take that place, mm. though you have good marks. So that, that became like oh, an easy thing in the community. Mm. And as, as I told you, close 1990s, it was a daily reminder in schools. Like you have to stand up every morning and repeat where you belong to. Mm. So repeat that you're Hutu, repeat that you're Tutsi, repeat that you're Tutsi. Mm. Uh, and, and that was like an, an, a normal thing. Tutsis, of course, are singled out um, in schools. So quickly, things are going to change by a little bit 
close to 1990s. Remember outside Rwanda, as I told you, there's um, so many Tutsis that fled. So they came, they went there in neighboring countries, Uganda, Congo, mm -hmm. Burundi, and others. So they formed life. You right. know, they made Where life they there. Were. They became citizens, mm -hmm. but also never forgot that they wanted to go back to their native country. So they want to come back, uh, and, and, and they use all the means to come back, right. all the mean, peaceful means to come back, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work, including treaties of peace that were you know, signed by the UN and our, our regional co co corporations. Mm -hmm. And he himself, supported by, the, by some of the superpower countries like France, mm -hmm. and he says that Rwanda was full, that there's no more space for them. Mm. So there's, he says he compared Rwanda as a glass of water. Mm. He says Rwanda is full like a glass of water. You can't add more people. Mm -hmm. So stay there where you were. Wow. Yeah. So of course he created tensions. Mm. And close to 19. So now it, now, now you can relate this to to the you know, to the Holocaust. Yeah. Right. Somehow or another. Mm -hmm. So here, close to 1990s. We have a country that suffers from economic problems. Mm -hmm. uh, tea and coffee well, are the main commodities we export. So their prices uh, went down, collapsed in, 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 on the international uh, market. Mm -hmm. But for the RPF, the RPF, there are those Tutsis that fled the refugees, the returnees, the, those who want to return in the country. But later on, there were not only a group of Tutsis, but you know, oppressed politicians of the genocide in that same place. And that's the same place that was attacked by a city deadly mosquito, uh, I, I told you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you see there, there are so many series of killings and attacks and dehumanization and polarization um, uh, anti-Tutsi. Uh, that's what I was trying to explain that you know, it took mm -hmm. so, time, so long. Mm -hmm. It's the only amount of time where they set it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the you okay this 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 will be like a little test. If you read this, what comes to your mind first? The Bible. Mm. Is that <laughs> what he's thinking? No. <laughs> oh, this wow. is exactly so the 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 ten commandments of Bible mm -hmm. and the ten commandments of Hutus mm -hmm. were basically showing them that you know they are trying God is you know, it's through us we were like we have been able to have these ten commandments of Hutus. Wow. Wow. And if you look at um, if you try to analyze the ten Hutu commandments, mm -hmm. more than fifty percent of them, like fifty five percent of them talk about the role of a woman. Role of a woman. Yes. Wow. Because they knew very well that if you have that woman you will easily have the husband and the kids. <laughs> and this right. correct. Wow. You're psychologically you right. have you, you have easy control on them. Right. Yeah. Wow. So the men were like lions, but women were like this yeah, it's a person mm -hmm. who were behind the lions. Right. Wow. Um, this is in French. Oh but but uh, these are duplicates of newspapers. Okay. Yeah. Um seat doctor from what from Tutsis. That's in a newspaper. Wow. wow. Yeah. And they became victims, became killers. Mm, victims yeah. became killers. Yeah. And I can see that for us, the pain that they were working in. You know, mm -hmm. victim, yeah, I can see them trying to switch it up and do something different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the, the thing is here, here it's done by the, by the government. Mm -hmm. So they are portraying them right. as the problem that the country has. Wow. So they're coming to kill. Uh -huh. So protect yourself. Right. Yeah. And that's in the newspaper. Mm. Wow. So here, you talk about how yeah. Clinton or any other person would have the stopped truth. the genocide. Mm -hmm. So at least, um, I wouldn't say stopping the genocide entirely, but 
when they saw that the audience is still very small, because not everybody could read, mm. so they changed from that to radio stations. Mm. So yeah. this is a radio station that can be jammed any anywhere from the world. Anytime. Anytime. America would have just switched it off. And switched it on. Because the UN soldiers themselves, they talked about the radio. Like right. How they did send the cable to New York and, and nothing was done. Nothing. So that's the head of the radio. Oh, they bought small radios. When I say they, it's the government. Right. And they distributed gave to everybody them. The, yeah. To spread the hate. That's it. Mm. And these are the shareholders of the radio. Wow. Oh, but this time, mm -hmm. this, these are francs, random francs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by this time, the dollar was like 80 francs, 80. Now it's almost 900. Mm. So you, so now you can tell how much the money was. Yeah. Wow. To set up this radio, but very easily shut it down. Mm -hmm. mm. wow. What's this? These are newspapers. And mm. Kangura was the main mm. hit uh, newspaper. Wow. Kangura basically means wake up. Wake up. Wow. Oh, but that's, that, there are two. There are two newspapers, two different newspapers. There was one that was called Kanguka, with a K. Mm -hmm. Kanguka also means wake up, mm. but it's more imperative. So you wake up, like mm. the way you tell your kid, wake up, mm -hmm. go to school. Wake up. Uh, uh, so this was called to be an anti-Hutu propagandist newspaper. Wow. The, the, the Kanguka. Yes. So they, they shut it down and created Kangura. Kangura. So Kangura, it's also wake up. But it's, I'm trying to wake you up. Right. Mm. So yeah. I'm, I'm waking you up. Yeah. Right. So here it was addressing to the mass Hutus like, we are trying to wake you up. Why don't you wake up? Right. See how, you know, how, see how Tutsi is a threat. Wow. Um, and this is, they draw the picture of, he was still young, our current president. Yeah. Who was leading the, um, the RPF army, army wing. Mm -hmm. So he's the one fighting, like leading the, the, those that group of people. Mm -hmm. But he's, th there was a one, so by this time he was in America studying. He was in a military school mm -hmm. somewhere in Tennessee, I think. And when they started the War of Liberation, he wasn't there. So the, the, the leader of the front army was immediately killed on the second day. Wow. So he was the head. The head is cut, and then right. people were displaced. Well, he, so he was called to do it, to come back from school. So he stopped school and came back and reorganized everything. And so here, it's a message to, to the mass voters. We have killed the first, and there's an open grave waiting to do the next. So don't worry, we control the situation. Wow. 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 Sign between now, now it's more over here, it's more like political games that are being played. So we have the RPF, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, Britain is, the government of Rwanda, they signed the Treaties of Peace. This is the biggest, the Arusha process, which basically had um, different resolutions the sharing of the power, the infusion of the army, you know, the return of the refugees, and, and so many others, but including also that they should stop killing people inside the country. Mm. which never stopped. He, he was the president, he came back I mean, immediately, he organized like a, an assembly for all the leaders and he said that whatever I signed was only papers. Mm. Which means keep doing the, the job you're supposed to be doing. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's also said that the international media um, did not give the importance um, to, to what is what was going on here. So they say that they portrayed what was going on here as the outbreak of violence between two African clans, you know, that you don't need to worry that much about. Wow. They played it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And which, obviously, this would have contributed to the non-reaction of the UN. Uh, you know, the power of media, right. if they do talk about it all the time, all the time, people will be... Real. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. But they, you know, they, it's so sad also that the UN, there's a general, a Canadian general called Romeo Dallaire. Mm -hmm. He was um, the head of the UN peacekeepers here. And he wrote a cable in um, April, the beginning of April 1994. Mm -hmm. And that cable was sent to New York, to the um, UN uh, headquarters. Mm -hmm. And it landed in the hands of Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan was a uh, Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, he died like a week ago, or two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. He was the um, chief of operations. So he was number two from the boss of the UN, wow. who also happened to be an, um, an Egyptian guy mm -hmm. from Egypt uh, called Bushos Bushos mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. So the cable has different um, mm -hmm. clauses, but one of them is that he witnessed, he's the head of the UN peacekeepers, and he saw the arms being distributed in people. He has trained around 1,700 militiamen. And these were supposed to be added another 300 each week. This is by 1993. And with the capacity of killing at least 1,000 people in 20 minutes. Mm. Not with Gunshots, but with machetes, just butchering, basically. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. And wow. if you look at the results of the genocide, mm -hmm. what we have right now, um, more than one thousand people in twenty minutes were killed. Wow. So they did more than. I mean, if you we have like a million and a hundred thousand already, if you calculate it to twenty minutes, mm -hmm. it's more than that. So the genocide was also predicted, mm -hmm. not only by the victims, but also by some of the officials, those who were mm -hmm. in the power, mm -hmm. uh, on the power with Javier Marna, talked about his death. They talked about something being, be, being done. Some of them talked about the apocalypse, uh, because to, to, at this point, it was too much of work to them. So you have the president who has his own plan, you have the people under him who control the money of the country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. extremist Hutus who want things to be done as quick as they can, mm -hmm. and, they, and he signs a peace agreement without their, their consent, yeah? and somehow they decided that he, he shouldn't be the president. The had already been prepared. Yes. They had a hit list the first hour. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh and that's, God. that's his, 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 his Bible story. His Bible story is considered as uh, the orchestrator, like the, the main mastermind of the whole this whole process. Are you serious? Yeah. Is he's he still now alive? in prison in Mali. Or prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he was given life sentence. <laughs> uh, this is a debatable thing as well. You guys might be re uh, released, released anytime. Any time. Yeah, they are asking for a, a release on parole. And the prosecutor general had signed it. The Rwandan government didn't know anything. The Hassan Yezes, two years from now, could be outside. Wow. Because they had good conduct in prison. <laughs> wow. So the apocalypse that we say. So on six April 1994, at 8.23 p.m. So the plane of the president has, has been shot down. He was traveling from Arusha for the observation of the peace agreement. Mm -hmm. So this becomes like a trigger, you know, like a trigger to the genocide. Mm -hmm. so, so one hour later, the prime minister is killed. She was a Hutu woman, a moderate. Mm -hmm. So this one, she has been trying to show around that this things could happen. And she had protected a lot of people, though she was Hutu. And um, she was supposed by the UN, the, by the Arusha process, like I said, explained before, supposed to be the president that is going to lead a one year interim um, period and supposed to preside over 
uh, elections that were supposed to be shared, you know, the power has to be sh had to be shared with the RPF. Mm -hmm. So immediately she was killed. Wow. And this is a new government that's won. Uh -huh. By the way, they, they sworn in in one in our town one day, and um, a couple of a uh, couple of minutes, and um, all of them, and they were supervised by the French, mm. by the French soldiers here. So they started killing. It's funny, this man is, so he was the prime minister immediately when she was killed. Wow. He's here. So this guy was a great propagandist of the genocide to young people mainly. And among the people that I was saying that could be released, in 2014, it's just like yesterday, he was, he's in prison, he pledged guilty in 1995. He was given life imprisonment. He's in Mali now. They don't, want, they don't want to send them over here because they fear that they could be killed or something. Oh, no question. But it's, you know, it's political interest. Mm -hmm. And he was given airtime in prison by a British television wow. to revise what he has agreed with. Wow. So this was like, it's, it was called uh, the movie, and it was called. Randa, the untold story. Mm. So this woman, I remember meeting her here at the memorial, came in with a different, she was disguised to someone else, mm. and she produced this terrible movie about Randa, mm. about Kagame, the president, and, and he, they went in prison to give him airtime. He's, he's agreed, he has agreed that he, he was the prime minister, by the way, wow. so he, of course. And like more than 30 minutes talking about how he was, you know, forced to to pledge guilty. So it's, yeah. And the, the, the killing started. So this mm. is um, the whole image. So as tiny as this country is, mm. like every, this was what I was saying at the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Every single thing, by the way, there's no, uh, the, uh, prove me wrong, it, rather than that here, there's not any conversation that if you sit somewhere and have a conversation with someone, somehow this will end or in the middle of the conversation talk about the genocide. Mm. Yeah. You, you proved it yesterday mm. at the church. Mm. I'm saying you say something and you're like, this country mm. has been somewhere. Uh -huh. So every single spot, every single thing in this country can be easily a reminder of something. Mm. Mm. So it was every, everywhere. Mm. And you know, this is a UN uniform. These are killers. Right. They're just moving freely around. Wow. Mm. And um, oh, but when she was killed, she was protected by 10 Belgian soldiers. Wow. And they died all together. Mm -hmm. These are, there are monuments in town. Mm. The soldiers died too? Mm. Yeah, they were killed by the yes. government soldiers. Like they were attacked, so many of them um, wow. attacked them. So what was the point here? So we have these extremist groups, they know very well. They know that in the history, you know how America pulled out in Somalia in 1990. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they, they have read a lot of these stories. They know that if they touch any Western soldier here, it'll be over. It'll be over. They will all pull down, they, uh, pull out. This is exactly what happened. They killed them to provoke mm. the UN. Mm -hmm. yeah. And immediately they pulled out after the death of 10 Belgians. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so the, the, so the plan was, this was what we supposed to do. And these are... Some of the tools. Yeah. Torture, sexual mutilation, yeah. rape. Wow. You know, all those stuff you can use. Yeah. Um, this first and fourth people were chained together by this chain here. And they, um, sent, they were thrown in a latrine where they died. In the hole? After, in a latrine, a toilet, where they died after a certain time of agony. So there's um, so two, two things on these arms here. Uh, first, these machetes where you remember the woman who was speaking in the first video? Mm -hmm. She's an English researcher called Dinda Mervyn. She wrote a couple of books. Um, one is called, uh, I like it, it's called A People Betrayed, The Role of the Western World here. Mm -hmm. And it, on, on a certain page she, she she wrote a, a whole interview that she had with the um, Boutros, Boutros guy, 
Bush was Gary was the UN Secretary General by this time when the genocide was happening. But in 1991, he was the Minister of Foreign Affairs of his country. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that signed a deal between Rwanda, Egypt, and China mm -hmm. so to buy so many trucks of machete. Mm -hmm. Wow. In 1991. So all those things were distributed to the, to, to the killers. Mm -hmm. And Rwanda that was living, uh, Rwanda that was living, um, more than 90% of Rwanda lived out of agriculture. So yes. it's very easy to import mm -hmm. such things. Mm -hmm. But oh. then, second mm -hmm. thing, we were given, I remember that, we were given homewards to make traditional tools. So I, I don't know if there's any Rwandan here who can remember that, but mm -hmm. in, at, in every school you had a store somewhere of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And this, you, you, you never, nobody ever thought about what was supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. So the, the, we never used them to cultivate or do anything. Mm -hmm. But they were kept there for so many years, and these are the same things that were distributed to the killers. Oh my God! It was so unfortunately, yeah. some people made tools that killed their own family. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! And this is how we, not, like currently we start thinking about that. Like when we are having discussions, mm -hmm. this is what comes, wow. comes to our mind. Jesus. Mm -hmm. The next video has so many graphic images. I would okay. like to show you that before. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There are children and. Do you want to sit down? 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 So, so, you can take a shot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's on a roadblock. So, immediately, roadblocks were set up oh my God. everywhere. So that's not in Rwanda, that's in uh, Uganda. Mm -hmm. There's a lake called Victoria, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, um, we have um, a river that is a tribute to that lake. Mm -hmm. But also the same lake is also a tribute to the Nile River. Mm -hmm. So, so many bodies were dumped into, into waters mm -hmm. to bring them back to where they belong to, in, using a shortcut. So the, 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 those, the, in Uganda, people living nearby the the lake, mm -hmm. we're not allowed to fish, mm -hmm. and you could just shoot, shoot, you know, fish uh, someone's body if you, if you mm -hmm. and the whole water was like bloody because of so many mm -hmm. corpses. Don't think she's an old woman, she was a very young woman in, in her less than 20 years, but she was starving. Yeah. You can see them killing them. Who is who is shooting the video from here? So this uh first this video is where we're uh it's um Were they filming CNN? Were, were they filming it? CNN. Yeah. Or CNN? So CNN brought, gave us donated to us some of the So footage. they were here so filming it? Satellites were around. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have everything. Yeah. They, they, this they, is just yeah. nothing what they have. Mm -hmm. Basically. So but the but the shot you saw mm -hmm. saw of someone being killed was um a Belgian teacher in one of the schools mm -hmm. who took it from his school, those right. who know a code Francaise. Mm -hmm. So the this he, image he had, is, he had a good good yeah. view. He had a good view. The school is like this one. Up yeah. high. He was up high from the mountain. I can yes. see I can see how he shot it up yeah. high and he was from he he wasn't a part of it. You know, he was, yeah, he was hidden somewhere exactly. Yeah, you know, we know. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now this is the church. This is the church of, I told you I'm going to after me. Dangerous. So we're talking about the church. Mm -hmm. All these. Uh, by the way, this this one still. 
Like this? This one you can probably show them. This is San mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's in the middle of the town, like mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. middle of the town there. Mm -hmm. I know some of the kids, you know, that survived from here. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is now a memorial. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. these two, it's the ones I'm, I'm going to go to. This one and that one. Mm -hmm. So this one doesn't exist anymore. The, the pastor, or the, no, no, the, the, the priest uh, ordered for two bulldozers to come knock it down. Over 3,000 people. Wow. Inside, was inside. More than 90% were his own congregants. Oh my God. So, and if you ask me where he is right now, he's free. He's working in, somewhere in Italy. Wow. He's still so in the church. They don't want to lose him. I mean, at least send him back to here. His judgment is being held. Yeah. If he apologizes, he won't. So the Catholic Church, after 23 years, so a couple of months ago, um, acknowledged, the Pope acknowledged the sins of the members of his church. It's not enough. Hmm. Yeah, but, uh, you know, if you apologize, then it comes with a lot of other, other stuff, repression yeah. and stuff, so they don't want to, and then, you know, the rules, losing the to protect <laughs> them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So women were raped in the churches. Mm -hmm. And in some of the places they had to make sure that you know they bring people who are HIV positive to oh, to, to spread mm -hmm. it. Because because this is what a genocide means. It's not about killing the person right there. If Slowly. you can do that, do that. But make mm -hmm. him suffer oh suffer. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not a quick death, a slow death. Not a quick death. Mm. But just make sure that in the future these people do not emerge. Exactly. This is this is what it is not about. Mm. So the genocide did not um, only leave, um, you know, did not take lives of people, Rwandans, of course, uh, but also left the country totally devastated. So mentally, people were here, dead. Physically, nothing, infrastructures, human infrastructure, everything. He left the country devastated, and it was only the smell of the death mm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So the country was totally dead. So the, the, I think the ideal for, for the genociders was not about, like I said, killing mm -hmm. only. So you make sure that, it's quite funny, you, people killed cows, right? right. Mm -hmm. So you kill cows, you destroy houses, you demolish houses. But you have the power to loot that house, right? Mm -hmm. At least. There's, right take the properties, but right. no, what makes them happy is you burn the house, you destroy everything that shows that this person exists, right. mm -hmm. and that's where the happiness comes from. Wow. So they found more pleasure into wiping them out right. mm -hmm. than sometimes taking their property, though right. somewhat some people did. Right. Yeah, so that's how you see houses were burnt and properties were... Is it true that they would give them uh, liquor, get, uh, Marijuana stuff to so the, the, in, in a different way, uh -huh. it's not giving them marijuana or you know for happiness or anything for, for no. It's it's after work. Right. Oh, after so you I meet somewhere, yeah. you drink a beer together so they had fun, right? So the thing is not take this to kill. No. No. You have done your work. Come and we go to share. Wow. So this is exactly what happened. People. They were working, like the mm. president, there's one speech I didn't read, of, of uh, the guy who was presiding the whole three months. Mm. He told them that it's work, right? Mm -hmm. So you are working. And for them, they started finding pleasure in working. Right. It's, it's, it, they started being creative. Instead of shooting a baby, you smash a baby against the wall. Right. You, you how to kill them? 
Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, pleasure. No, it's it's just more pain. Exactly. You're not going to use the machete all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. No. Mm -hmm. Beach. Look for another way of to killing them. Of, right. yeah. of working. Of working. Wow. They, if they knew they were killing, they wouldn't have done this. But they, mentally. They mentally. Were, so they, mentally, they thought they was working. It's instead. work. And you have to be innovative. Right. And you have to be creative. And you will get remunerated. Mm. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, the UN again. Unfortunate. I, I said it before. By the way, Romeo Dene, this is the guy here. He's Canadian. He was the general of, okay. of the UN peacekeepers mm -hmm. uh, who was traumatized. I think he spent like six years on the street after the genocide in Canada because, you know, Drinking on the street. Mm -hmm. no. He's hit by it. No, he's still there. Really? He was homeless in Canada? Just he walking was, he became homeless because of what he has seen here. You know mm -hmm. Is he the one that sent the fax? Yes, to help? that's the one that sent the fax. Wow. wow. And they know what he knew that they knew, but they yeah. wouldn't help. Yeah. Wow. Now he's, uh, he talks around. He just talks. So he just talks. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he, he teaches here that. about, mm -hmm. he has like two lectures he does every year uh, at our military. Academy. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. And um, so he asked for 5,500 troops at least. Wow. So they gave him 2,700 uh -huh. first. Later he says, I need more means. I need more power. Right. I need more authority. Like, give me, I can't do anything with what you, you, you gave to me as power. Right. Mm -hmm. So give me more means. The response is, do what we sent you to do. But another response is withdrawing, you know, pulling up with all these international workers here, and all those people you see here were killed. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when they left after the ten, the death of ten Belgian soldiers, um, he, they basically, you know, the killers were around. Right. The fences. They knew that. They knew what is going to happen. Yeah. Right. So they just left them, and thousands of them were killed. Um, so after they left, a couple of people sp spoke, you know, the Pope of that time spoke, some of the people like the Minister of Foreign Affairs of New Zealand and other people. So they were, the UN was, Security Council was obliged to send another group of, you know, another troops. troops. So they, they were sent on 17 <coughs> May. So it was one month and mm -hmm. almost and a half. Mm -hmm. So these guys, it was a very urgent case. They took a seaway. What? They took a sea. Longest route. Almost one and a half months. So to arrive months. in Kampala, Uganda. That's our neighboring country. Yeah. So they would have taken another like one week and a half to pack their trucks and everything and drive towards Kigali, coming to save life, right? And the RPF, you know, like all this period we are talking, they were fighting mm -hmm. towards Kigali. Mm -hmm. They simply sent them a fax that you have no place here. Mm -hmm. We called you when we wanted you, you didn't come, so go back. And strategically, they had already controlled enough places to be able to impose order and, and, and rule. That's the army that raised up to stop the yes. killing. Yes. I housed one of them. Mm -hmm. I housed one of them. Oh. Yeah, he told me many stories. That's, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, and very unfortunate as well. I'm not telling you this to hate French people, but mm -hmm. this is true. <laughs> um, by, by the beginning of June, the French government convinced the UN Security Council that you know they have been here for so long, the Great Lakes region, they can do if they allow they can conduct a you know a humanitarian mission here, so they were allowed to do so. So they act for controlling the um, northwest to the southwest, um, yeah, uh, part of the country. But then strategically, this is nearby Congo. 
So what they do was parallel parallel to, um, to the humanitarian work that you know they pretended to be coming to, to do here. Mm -hmm. They also conducted some military force um, mission, which was supposed to provide like a free corridor, a free way to the killers, mm -hmm. because they have been working with them for so long, mm. and they, you know, allowed them to flee the country and go to Congo. Were they tr causing trouble now? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. much trouble. Yeah. Everywhere they cause trouble. Cause everywhere. trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And despite that there's a ministry in charge here, there's a ministry in charge of rehabilitating them in the country. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't want to come. Yeah. So, it's, this, that, for me, that's not the saddest story. In, this, in that same area, this is nearby where I was born from, there was a technical school um, where around 50,000 people uh, went to hide. And they were killed, almost everyone, around less than 100 people were only survived from that attack. Mm. And um, their bodies were, you know, piled in, 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 a, in graves mm. over there. So when the French people came, this is where they had to stay, that technical school. They knew very well that these bodies are there. Mm -hmm. So what they did was paving uh, those um, those graves right. with um, a volleyball pitch. I heard that. They had fun every single day. Wow. So this is a man that we do honor a lot. Carl Wilkins was the only American that decided to stay in the country. So he told his family. So what he did, that he saw what was going on, he was the head of the Adventist Development Agency, ADRA. Mm -hmm. So his mission, he thought that if he does leave these people die, he wouldn't have done anything the whole time he has been leading the ADRA, mm -hmm. because the mission also was the same, to save mm -hmm. lives. So he sent his three kids and wife outside right. the country, and he stayed to at least record what is going on. Right. And he would send facts every day to the UN, like right. every day, every day, every day. And to his wife as well, like this is what I'm doing, uh, people are dying, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. And he was the only one that, he, he refused, he refused the UN, I mean the American ambassador's call about leaving the country. Mm. He said, no, I'm staying here. Mm. You don't want to stay, I am staying. What happened to him? He's still alive. I think he's living in the country now. I met him like two weeks ago or something. Really? Wow. Yeah. How does that feel? To meet him. I mean, he's he's a hero. Yeah. How does it feel for you to know what you know right now, and you do this day in and day out? Of course, it's hard. How does that make you feel? Um, so for me personally, it's it's like a sanctuary to me at this day. Mm. So I feel so. You know, like you're honoring your people, right? If you mm -hmm. do this, you, if you do this work, right? Mm -hmm. Which it's still very hard, but mm -hmm. but you love it. You love mm -hmm. to do it. Right? Uh -huh. How how did how did how did you get the, the information? Is is it because of your father, or is it something that you lived? Because you know this information very well. Yeah, I think it's something that comes. But some of the information that I knew yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something that comes every day. Every day, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. every day, you get to know, and you you know you do research, you mm -hmm. do comparatively, mm -hmm. you know uh, comparative researches, and you get to know things every day. Every mm -hmm. day. Did you lose your family also? Yeah, a lot, a lot oh. of times. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. there it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. I, I would, that's why you have passion about. Oh yeah, that's what I'm yeah. Doing. See, okay, mm -hmm. yep. Do you believe that the hate speech has stopped and will never is finished, or is there still pockets of it? You mean in the country here, or? In the country, yeah. So it's so hard to, I mean, we still have like some of the cases of people mm -hmm. that you, you are not, I mean, the system doesn't accommodate you. Right? Come, right, yeah. So you, mm -hmm. you go outside, run, and go talk about whatever you want to talk, talk about, about, but not in the country. Yeah. Right. Wow. It's 24 years ago. People still have a parents that are, you know, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. that, that are wounded. Yeah. You know, so you're not gonna talk about. I we want you 
will let you do what you know whatever you want to do because they feel like you want to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many people have wounds, and any time they can be opened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, How does it feel? What do you? What would you say to to somebody who hates? Um. Wow. I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you hate. You you are. You. It's it's first bad to you. It's, mm -hmm. it's not bad to the person you're hating mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. No, it's bad. I, I read this. It's not about hate only, but mm -hmm. this, um, you know, by standing hate or looking hate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this statement from someone who was in the Holocaust Museum who um, he, he said that he. He saw some, something like Jewish being killed, and he kept quiet because he did he was not Jewish. Mm -hmm. And then, after they came to him as well, and nobody else was there mm -hmm. to help him. Right. To help him. Mm -hmm. First, because he did not help anybody, mm -hmm. so he waited until he came to him. Mm -hmm. You know, so he, I think he think is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Why would you hate someone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's. Color, ethnic. Color. It can be, it, 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 it's so interesting. It, it can be so many different dynamics, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. And we 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 we're, we're, we're doing a thing. Um, it's on Facebook. We have an organization, and it's called Why We Hate. Mm -hmm. So um, it's something that is going to be introduced to the world, man. And this right here will be part of some of the stuff that we do as far as introducing why we why people hate, and you know. We, we want to get everybody's views. Mm -hmm. We have cases of people that hated, and and and, and right now, I like the I, mindset, right? Yeah, but <laughs> you mean like right now? Imagine they're in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, they hated people. They wanted to kill people. They killed people. Mm -hmm. And right now, they are in this same place, <laughs> free. And they're living with the people they have killed families for. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so and hiding what, it. But well, they don't know, but they, they didn't know they, it, right? They don't, they ain't tell the people that this is what they do. Yeah. They live together. Wow. Some of them, inter, I mean, married families. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah, these are cases. This is where I'm going in this afternoon. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. bringing people there. And it's, it, it's an, I, 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 I'm, I'm not yet there. I'm running. I know that that level of love. That's a love. That's a lot of. That's a lot of Jesus in, in you. Right, right. <laughs> Amen. You know, yeah, it is. It's. I, I mean, they were inspired by the word of God, by the way. But um. Mm. So I, I try to put myself in the shoes of that person that killed husbands and kids, and and the kids, their kids now are studying together. Wow. Playing so together. Who, who, playing together, studying, sharing everything together. So who, who, who hated who, by the way? Right, 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 you know, right. Yeah. Where the person where it hated himself, because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. he's, he will never be free. Never, never be free. His, his dreams will never be free. Yeah, never. Yeah. Spirit. Never. Kids it's are still remember. crying. Like we talk to some of them, they, I still have those cries of kids in my, in your head, in my mind. I think when you hate, you are hating yourself first, and then wow, and wow. then you are, wow. you know, I, we have cases and cases. I know, you know, I know you've seen it all coming through here, and you know, especially meeting all these guys who was a part of it. I think it's something that you know, um, actually, from each person who who was a part of it, it helps. Their, it's like therapy. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, like therapy to get in their head to see where they came from and, and their views mm -hmm. from everything that that happened and. You put it's like a puzzle, putting it, mm. putting things together, and coming up with one, uh, one, one source. One more question: the passport now, is it dividing or is it one um, just one? It's the first thing that was abolished. Was abolished. Wow! Yeah. Like no more, no more. I, I use those terms every single minute. Yeah. Right. Because it's I'm I'm doing it for the right positive Here. side. Yeah. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. in education, teachers are going to start to be using those terms because they're. Will be teach, teaching peace education in schools, right? Mm -hmm. Which will be also like a cross cutting subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you try to talk about peace in maths, talk about peace in bureaucracy, mm -hmm. talk about peace in 
everything. Culture, yeah. mm -hmm. Everything, not the culture. Uh, but this is where the law enforcement comes. Like if you use it negatively, then this is law. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you use positively, then. So there's no way of separating anybody anymore. You don't. There's a law. Yeah. After you threat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. I mean, we've seen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, definitely. Question, has the government formed a truth and reconciliation commission at all? We're heading there. Ah. We're heading there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying that, I mean, I think we need to be a speaker. Okay? Yeah. So if we have the it, three reasons why we have to still have survivors. Mm -hmm. The RPF army wing that mm -hmm. stopped the genocide. Yeah. Some of the resistances, not too many. Like this case, 50,000 people, less than 20 of them. Uh, resisted and they, they're still alive mm -hmm. because not all the Hutus were the king. Ah. We have a lot of people that took huge risk of death and they protected their neighbors. And, wow. Wow. Yeah. So these are. The Hutus that did it. Yeah. So this woman, this mm -hmm. is kind of. So this man protected this, this woman wow. because he read he was Muslim and he read in the Quran that if you protect one person equals to save the whole world. Mm -hmm. And he never knew, he read it after, that the same verse exists in the Jewish Torah. Wow. So at the end of the day, she's, she, she was 72 years old, mm -hmm. and she protected around 100 people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Simply pretending that she was a witch person. A witch person. Witch. 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 Oh, wow. So that was uh, <laughs> that yeah, was put smart. a hex on you. <laughs> <laughs> she played like a lot of them. Around 50 people, killers, wanted to enter the hospital. Like, no, no, we died on the guest. Wow. Oh, wow. And they were also afraid to die. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, refugees, of course, we have a lot of people mm -hmm. that immediately run. Most of them protected, uh, supported by the French, right? Mm -hmm. And and those who were enough uh, like grown-ups to to analyze the situation, I'm sure this picture, you know it. My God. Well, you probably forgot it, but this is among the first pictures that were aired in wow. the Western media houses. Wow. And this picture is not about. So here again, the victims became killers. Mm. So, this picture had sometimes like a caption of, you know, the the rebel, a rebel group, RPF yeah. comes from mm -hmm. blah blah blah, comes in the country and kills a lot of people, and then we have them, you know, displaced and moving towards neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. But no. This is a picture of those killers that left the country devastated. Wow. And don't think they, they did it without knowing that it was. Right. No, they knew very well that it was. Wow. Wow. And it's, it's also funny to see how three kilometers from the border <coughs> of Congo, we have people being fed. So the UN immediately intervenes. So the power of the media, right? Uh -huh. Uh, millions of people in Congo, blah, 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 blah. Of course, they were refugees. They had also to be fed, but they forgot that on the border, on the side of Rwanda, people were dying, starving of hunger, and nothing was done for a couple of years, wow. for a couple of months. Wow. And the same support <coughs> that was given to them, support helped them to come back in 1996, 97, when they attacked um, schools and different other places. It was like towards the border. And this is one of the schools they attacked and um, they killed some young mm. ladies and men. Wow. She's a survivor of the of, of it, of that attack. And so here, uh, one special thing that happened is that, which was very inspiring, they were told students to divide themselves into Hutus and Tutsis. Wow. Because they couldn't tell who is supposed who, to be Hutu or Tutsi. Yeah, right. Yeah, somehow, right. there's no difference. And students refused. So one younger stood up and said, we are all Rwandans, which has been an aspiration. You know, like, why not? Why? So a, a gun was pointed on, on, on her, and she said, we are Rwandans. She was immediately 
kill wow. the boss. Mm -hmm. But then why not? When you don't have a gun pointed on you, right? Why can't you be all right? Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So we have. We won't think long here. Yeah. We have survivors, you know, of course, the society doesn't, I mean, that society is also traumatized. So we have people dying of hunger, mm -hmm. and the government, when he respects it again, he gets 5% um, of his budget goes towards um, the, the support, the fund of survivors, mm -hmm. which had to deal with two things. First, schooling them on healthcare, and then mm -hmm. other people also, chat group um, based organizations, and, and others came in to support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'll quickly read this for you. The National Trauma <coughs> Survey by UNICEF mm -hmm. estimated that 80% of random children experience death, 8-0, and 70% uh, witnessed someone being killed or injured, mm -hmm. and 90% believed they would die anytime. Uh -huh. So there was no tomorrow, um, so much traumatism, and you know, retrieving bodies from the places where they were thrown was also another problem, and. Um, you know, you could simply mm -hmm. go around and step on someone's body. People, parents lost children, children lost. So there's really no, no, there's no number that, there's no mag, mag, magnificent number you can put on it that was killed, right? Okay. When it's simply an approximation. All right. yeah. So it, it grows every, every grow each and every day. Every day. Wow. Mm. wow. So young people became parents. Mm -hmm. Your know, household, wow. you're 20 years old, mm -hmm. you have another group of 20 or 15 young people mm -hmm. that you have to take care of. Mm -hmm. uh, I could be a grandfather now. Mm -hmm. No, I am a grandfather of two kids, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and my daughter was the same age. So, <laughs> so this, is, this was the situation. Like, you had, like, people had to find solutions. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Wow. And at the same time, you're walking around the people whom you saw probably killing your parents or, or you know, this was like a tumor in the, in the country. Wow. Mm. Amen. <coughs> so someone was asking, yeah, about the truth and reconciliation. So we call it gachacha. Mm -hmm. So first, this was very wise. Um, so we have a country now that loses everything. like a million everything mm -hmm. and, and labor, mm -hmm. including more than a million people die in a hundred days. So there was uh, some consultative meetings that were happening around and a group of people was given like an assignment that you need to think about justice. Mm -hmm. Tell us what is going to be the step forward. Mm -hmm. Think about the economy, think about whatever. So these people that were given this task of on, on justice, already we had the IC, I mean the the classic and normal fires. Mm -hmm. And we had death penalty. So the thing is, and the ICDR as well, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So they both had death penalty. And if you would have waited for these courts to deal with the problem of justice, we would have waited more than 350 years at least <laughs> to deal with the justice problem. Mm. No reconciliation on that point. So second, these two courts that had death penalties, so if, we, if we lost to one million people in 100 days, mm -hmm. you think about how many people killed them mm -hmm. with machete. So there was massive participation in, in Wow. So how many would have you lost in the name of justice? Mm. You know, like be, because they would have been probably given death penalty. Mm. Mm -hmm. A couple of months later, I, I remember like 26 people were shot. They were given death penalty. Mm -hmm. So how many would have been 
killed, 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 mm -hmm. killed. They say mm -hmm. go. Death penalty will abolish it forever. Wow. So they started a um, um, Kaigol project to abolish that. Why? Because also, like economy, economically speaking, a country that only depends on its people, like we depend only on labor, we have no resources, mm -hmm. nothing. So then losing people would have been another problem. We lost doctors, mm -hmm. we lost everything. Everything. Right. So let's, that's where the reconciliation process came in. So the kachacha, kachacha means grass. Mm -hmm. So which means you go back in your community and you sit down on oil and the philosophy behind it was like, if you sit down, you're all equal. Mm -hmm. Survivors, mm -hmm. perpetrators, on look at everyone, you're all equal and talk about what happened. So wise people in the communities were chosen uh, in 12,000 community-based courts. Talking about results, so this court provided justice to around 2 million people mm -hmm. in only 10 years. And they get some of the properties were given back. Yeah, given back. Wow. But for me, most importantly, like I was telling you, was the information that we collected from those, mm -hmm. from the courts. And that's why we have this information, all this wow. information here. Yeah, it's like we're trying to educate people because we have this information already. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we are infusing peace education in the curriculum of mm -hmm. education now mm -hmm. because we have materials, mm -hmm. teaching materials that we collected from oh. this, this, um, this court. So this was one of the most successful thing the government ever had here. Wow. All those people I was telling you the, who reconciled, who are living together, they thank the church of having done this work. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there were, there were a couple of presidential patterns that were given to the killers. Like whoever gives information, whoever uh, um, accepts its guilt and repents, and mm -hmm. ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And also, among the information, it was, there was, like, where did you put the bodies of the people you have killed? Mm -hmm. Which, immediately, on the side of the survivor, it's another healing process that starts. Mm -hmm. Because you at least bury your own, your own people. Exactly. So this, this is what the church What happened to the Prime Minister and all of those people who took over? Some of them, like I told you, the money, okay. the money, there are two nuns also who killed. Oh my God. Um, mm -hmm. They have been uh, in prison. This one, he's, he's in Rwanda. He was uh, extradited from Canada recently. His trial still continues because he, he makes it uh, taking long. Mm -hmm. But he's the one who had this speech of uh, letting people know that Nyamarongo, which was like a tribute to the Nile River, mm -hmm. would be a shortcut to send them to the back way they belong to. Mm. He was a doctor by the time mm. Mm -hmm. in literature, so he, he knew very well what a word means. Wow. If you, we believe that um, every society has, uh, um, uh, like the future of, of every society depends on its ability to cope with the past, like how you use your past to, 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 to have the future uh, in another sense. And um, so we have chosen to remember, but we will never stop remembering. We know how hard it is. Um, and. Um, you know, peace is, is a man and security. It's a man with the main pillars of this country. Mm -hmm. That you would feel safe wherever uh, you, you were. And, and this gives birth to the social and economic revolution that the country is mm -hmm. knowing now. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we're going to go through um, three rooms here. Mm -hmm. We have around 3,500 pictures. Wow. Here. Uh, the people you have paid tribute to. Uh, these, these ones are among them.
Is it all the people who perished? All of them perished, but not all of them are here with us. We still receive uh, pictures from the families. So this is a sanctuary to around 100 people. Wow. We chose to bury them this way, you know, for the works and the, the reality. Thank 
Spot was swimming and she liked eggs and chips. Her drink was fantastic. Um, my best friend, her elder sister, for death, and she was halfway in the chip as well. which means to pray which basically means that there's no more there's no more option mm -hmm. like it's the only thing is that yes, it's all. Jesus. and he was shot in the head mm. shot in the head mm -hmm. he shot the baby in the head mm -hmm. he's not he's not he's not he's not Kids, a grenade was thrown in their shower. And Patrick, five years old, a quiet and well behaving boy, was hacked by Machete. Mm. Oho, two years old, a little very talkative girl was burnt alive at, at the church again. A hammer organ, who, um, as the last memory, saw his mom dying. Uh, was short dead. Mm. 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 Mm.
grandmother's child. And Fabrice, 15 months old, she was killed at Mohoro Church. So you might, you saw the repetition of church and machete church. So this is, this is it. And Fiek was smashed against the wall. Mm -hmm. He was only three years old, and Thierry Ishine was um, macheted in his mother's arms. Mm -hmm. So there's one purpose now, one objective. The aid to be a survivor like Olivier, who chose to not revenge but live in a good way. Mm -hmm. Or another survivor like Everest, who seeing his survivors' lives changing, uh, what, it's, what brings hope to his, uh, for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Therese was born from a uh, family that killed. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, Therese, as young as she is, tries to help her father to accept and ask for forgiveness. Mm. So these are, you know, different ways of healing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and dealing with this situation. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is one is to have this country having harmony back again. So this is going to be ten, uh, six minutes long, and it's uh, um, a couple of testimonies from people to show you how, you know, after all these hardships, like life continues, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they have families as survivors, mm -hmm. and um, and hope as well. So, um, and uh, this will be like the conclusion of, of the tour. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
المسلمه ملي على الفهم زين ما سي تيم بال الارانيف راه ما يخدموش